Hi guys, um, my name is Hikashi Oki and um, I'm uh, Japan lead for DYDX Foundation. Um, thank you for, for coming uh, today and listening to uh, my presentation. So, I guess um, I should start explaining about what DYDX Foundation is actually. Um, DYDX Foundation, when you think about uh, DYDX Foundation, you, you often hear two different organizations. Um, one is DYDX Foundation and the other one is uh, DYDX Trading. And I'm from uh, DYDX Foundation, and which is basically supporting the ecosystem development of, uh, uh, of DYDX DAO. Uh, DYDX Trading, on the other hand, is more like a developer company and uh, basically writing code. Uh, you can say DYDX Foundation is doing everything except for writing code. Um, so that's sometimes uh, people get confused, so I wanted to uh, clarify that part. But both of the companies aim for the success of DYDX anyway. So that's, you know, maybe at, in the end it doesn't maybe, it may not matter much. Um, so today I'm gonna uh, share with you the, the recent development of um, DYDX ecosystem. And also, there's some in interesting uh, movement in the Japanese market that's very related to uh, interoperability thesis. So I wanted to uh, I want to talk about a bit more about that um, later. So um, this is just a disclaimer. Um, what I'm going to be talking about today is just um, just for informational purpose only, and not. Um, not uh, investment advice, basically. Um, so um, let me um, talk to you about uh, DYDX uh, briefly. Uh, we are uh, leading uh, decentralized exchange, exchange for perpetual swap uh, trading. And we adapt the order book style decentralized exchange. Uh, and uh, uh, for, for that category, I think we are the biggest one uh, for now, but we haven't. Uh, we are, we don't want to stop there, basically, and we want to overtake the uh, centralized exchange part as well. So, Antonio, the founder of DYDX Trading, uh, often talks about overtaking Binance, for example, in five five years and ten years, and we are not really satisfied with being now number one in DEX uh, territory. Uh, we want to do more. Um, currently, we record around 10 billion trading volume on, uh, on a daily basis. Um, and that's, um, uh, yes, uh, that, that's current uh, record. And that's about 1 to 2 percent of the overall perpetual trading volume in uh, ESA and Bitcoin. Um, so it, we, no, there's a lot more, to, a lot more for for the improvements there, um, and I think an um, interesting part would be uh, we only offer perpetual swap as a, as a product at this moment. We don't really have option uh, option trading and so, uh, spot trading yet. Uh, we wanted to start with the perpetual uh, trading because um, currently. The crypto trading volume is really dominated by uh, perpetual trading. 70%, 80% is all about perpetual trading, let's say. So if you want to become a number one crypto exchange, both in DEX and SEX, you have to win in this perpetual uh, market. So that's why uh, we, we kind of started from here. And afterwards, we are planning to add uh, more services and products. Uh, we started, uh, DYDX started on Ethereum mainnet first, and then moved to um, layer two uh, called Stackware. And now very excited uh, to say that we are moving to Cosmos uh, and planning to launch um, DYDX chain. Um, Last year, we, ha we achieved, uh, we had about 33,000 active traders, uh, 4,660 billion volume, 
and 173 uh, million feet. Um, pretty much um, main traders are very um, professional traders and institutional traders currently. Not much, not many retail, mass retail traders are trading at PYDX yet because, because of the uh, product that uh, we are offering. So perpetual stop sounds really intense and it's um, maybe a little bit um, too difficult for the uh, mass retail users. But moving forward, we would like to increase the number of active uh, traders even more and together with um, institutional and uh, professional tra traders uh, we have currently and want to basically expand uh, a lot more. So um, why we are moving to Cosmos? Um, Cosmos SDK offers full customizability, right? So that enables us to uh, create sovereign blockchain, uh, which we call um, DYDX chain. And that really uh, essentially allows us to control every aspect of the stack and can only focus on the product, let's say. We can think only about how to create the best possible product uh, because the chain is entirely dedicated to the, uh, the, the DYDX product. Uh, also, the Cosmos SDK offers scalability. Uh, in the current version, V3, uh, around 1,000 orders are placed and cancelled per second, uh, which is not as performant as Binance and as a like, major centralized exchange. I think it's okay uh, trading experience. Um, but we want to be, uh, we just don't want to just, we just don't, we want to keep the same level of scalability at least in the beginning of the, of the version four. So that's uh, 1,000 orders placed and cancelled per second, right? And that uh, is something Cosmos SDK um, makes possible. Uh, and um, lastly, um, and equally importantly, uh, decentralization is, um, is a key. Uh, currently, DYDX trading is essentially controlling the order book and matching engines. But in the Cosmos, uh, it's going to be controlled by validators who exist basically all over the world. Uh, we are assuming around, uh, I think, 100 to 150 validators in the beginning of V4. Uh, but they are going to be geographically distributed, right? So it's not it's really a decentralized way of um, running um, order book and matching engines. Uh, also, front ends and indexer are going to be open sourced, uh, meaning um, not uh, divided trading, uh, controlling front end and in the front end and indexer, but uh, third parties um, can uh, use the open source code and come up with um, uh, front end by themselves. And uh, in the beginning of the V4, uh, we are, I think we're going to be having main indexers and front ends. But after that, it is possible to have regional specific front ends. So let's say there may be a Japanese version of uh, DYDX front end. Korean version of uh, DYDX front end as well. So I think that, uh, that's really exciting. Um, yeah, this is just to quote uh, Antonio Giuliano, the founder of DYDX, uh, he, he thinks uh, decentralization as follows. Uh, the decentralization of a system is equal to the decentralization of its least decentralized uh, component. Um, now, um, DYDX is really uh, committed to the product. So product, 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 that's basically the only thing that you hear in, in a daily conversation. We may say that we are, in that sense, uh, product maximalist. We are not really chain maximalist, we are product maximalist. Um, and that, in my opinion, actually, uh, stands out 
thanks to the um, application-specific blockchain thesis. So uh, that's Antonio's uh, tweet, and recently he all, uh, remarked about um, Cosmos brand as well. But I think uh, if, I guess in the end, users don't really care what change, what change the, in which change uh, products are built on, basically. They, I think they're gonna use DYDX just because DYDX is good, not because it's based on, you know, Ethereum or Cosmos or you know, other change, right? Uh, I guess that really uh, is the key that he wants to, uh, and DYDX wants to push forward as a message. Um, sometimes, you know, we are moving from Ethereum to Cosmos, so sometimes people ask, um, I mean, how, how, you, how we can basically you know, transition Ethereum people to Cosmos people. I, that's like, I mean, important consideration, but I think that DYDX wants to push the message that it's DYDX. <laughs> it's not like picking up a community. Uh, so that's, um, that's something uh, we think. Uh, we talk about every day and actually that's Paradoxically, so we are not talking about blockchains, but paradoxically, it's really good for that. If that state is successful, it's really good for Cosmos and interoperability thesis. Um, so here is the um, uh, life cycle of order. So let's say in V4 version 4, you can take a look at how uh, trade will be a trade order will be recorded on on chain. So, you know, as a user, you place an order, right, and on a decentralized front end or via API, and that order is gonna be sent to a validator who then shares the order with other validators and uh, through nodes. And then the certain uh, validator is gonna be picked up as, uh, as a proposal, and then that proposal is going to basically uh, put the order in the in the block, uh, and the proposed block goes through the consensus process, right? And if um, certain percentage of validator nodes said yes to the block, the then the block is committed and they save to the on-chain database of all validators and through nodes. So they're going to have to update that with other existing um, order books. Uh, if the consensus says no, it's just gonna get rejected. And after the block is committed, uh, we have the updated on-chain data. Uh, and that's gonna be uh, utilized by indexers and sent it to the front end, and you can see that uh, that's updated on the front end part. Um, we have, uh, we are currently in the milestone three, concluding, um, uh, concluding pri private testnet. And hopefully by the end of this month, or maybe early next month, we're gonna be starting uh, public testnet, uh, milestone four. And hopefully uh, by the end of September, or maybe early October, we're gonna be we're going to be launching um, mainnet and basically uh, moving to moving to Cosmos. Um, you, usually, I would like to talk a lot about DYDX DAO because I, I do believe this is really an um, exciting topic. So the DYDX basically believes in progressive decentralization. Uh, Meaning that uh, that's a concept pushed forward by Andres and Holovitz, and no, it's, it's DAO, but you can't really achieve full decentralization on day one. You kind of have to gradu gradually decentralize, you know, things moving forward. And we kind of want we, we are believing believing in that concept. Um, so that's really hot topic. You know, I mean, how 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 are you gonna how how you can achieve. Uh, Progressive decentralization is really a great question. No one has answer yet, I think. 
Um, so we are, no, we are moving, but we are also trying to figure out what, what that looks like, basically. Also, the um, interesting, interesting topic regarding DAO is how you can incentivize DAO participants. So, but, no, there are many, no, uh, DAO governance participants, right? They are, they are active on, on communication, they are active on making proposal, they are active on research. But most of the time, they are not really getting compensated. So what are we going to do with that, right? We, it's not really sustainable that uh, if those people don't get paid. Um, so we, we also trying to find, find out a way to incentivize participants and um, yeah, uh, DAO contributions. Um, so, uh, I mean, those, those topics, I think, um, is something that uh, it takes uh, another presentation to fully discuss, but that those are really interesting topics. But for now, I think for this slide, uh, DYDX DAO has two sub, sub, sub DAOs. So, sub DAOs um, um, basically expert group of um, within the DAO. So we have um, grants and operations sub DAO for now. And uh, other candidates are going to be risk analytics, R&D, growth, finance, and treasury management. Uh, and, but that's kind of uh, up to the DYDX community. Um, if they want to you know, uh, create those sub DAOs, they can. It's really up to them, and it also depends on the uh, product market fit of the V4. Uh, let's say V4 uh, launch, uh, we may not. It may take time to uh, for the V4 DYDX to be, you know, uh, to be really as pro pro performant as V3 or even more. So we may we, will, we may want to see the pro product market fit first, and then uh, coming up with um, sub DAO. Uh, relevant to that, uh, to, to promotion, for example. But it's really open question. Um, now, yes, that has been uh, DYDX part, and uh, for the last two or three slides that I have, I'd like to talk a bit about the recent Japanese uh, development regarding uh, stable coins and um, uh, cross, cross chain thesis. Um, so, I guess to give you a little bit of, of the context in the Japanese crypto market, we don't have stable coins such as USDC and US, USDT listed on the Japanese exchanges for now. Uh, so, you, if you are if you live if you are living in Japan, you kind of have to go to non-registered exchanges, send send your Bitcoin to non-registered exchange and exchange that to stablecoin and then, and then send it to MetaMask or you know, other private uh, wallets. So that's, that's been the situation. Uh, this is because um, we had this crypto law back in 2018 and they defined crypto assets in another way. So they didn't think about stablecoins coming in a few years. So they couldn't say that several coins are part of the crypto assets. So if basically, they, they didn't know what to do with the uh, stable coins for, uh, for a very long time. Uh, since 2018, so it's going to be, it's, it's about like five years. Stable coins, you know, what to, what to, uh, what to position it is the, it's something that we have been discussing uh, and uh, it, take a, it took a long time. But finally, we had new law, the Payment Services Act, as no, also known as the Stablecoin Law, uh, became effective on, on, the, uh, on June 1st this year. So it was like last week, I think, or two weeks ago. A very recent development. So thanks to this new law, Japanese exchanges may be able to list stablecoins in Q2 next year. Uh, and several Japanese banks and startups are preparing to issue 
um, Japanese yen stablecoins such as uh, Frogmat uh, and JPYC. And that's the development on the side of the stablecoins, but it, uh, they are moving a bit, bit further than that. Uh, so they are not just about stablecoin, but the Japanese mega bank are actually talking about cross chain. So I think that's really uh, exciting um, to me, uh, that, uh, at least, because we have never seen this kind of development before. So, yeah, I mean, so Japanese mega bank in this case is uh, Mitsubishi UFJ Trust and Banking Corporation. Uh, Mitsubishi UFJ Bank is essentially the biggest uh, biggest bank in Japan. Uh, they are they are trying to issue Progma coin and they want it to be cross chain uh, capable. And they are collaborating with uh, Toki, uh, which is IVC cross chain solution. Uh, and no. They are very serious about not just issuing stable coins, and want to, but want to make it cross-chain. So that means technically, you can buy in Japan Japanese yen stable coins, program, and then send it to the Cosmos ecosystem, and then eventually to uh, DEXs and the DYD chain. Um, so that's. Uh, it, it's just like uh, that. This doesn't. This hasn't happened yet. It's still you no. Know, uh, the concept, the conceptual uh, thing, still. But um, some glimmer of hope is here, and uh, maybe uh, good for uh, Japanese stablecoin market, also for the Cosmos ecosystem, and for the uh, uh, you know interchain uh, uh, interoperability. CSIS in general. Um, so that uh, that uh, wraps up my presentation basically, and um, I put my uh, not mine. I put uh, DYDX Japanese community Twitter account here. Uh, usually we tweet or tweet in Japanese, but we would like to reach out to more international audience moving forward. So try to uh, try to give you give you the followers the. Japanese development in, in the in English. Um, oh, also, of course, about uh, DYDX uh, before movement. So uh, feel, feel free to follow. And uh, if you have any questions, I, I, I check the DMs uh, you know, every, I guess, one hour. So uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, please feel free to DM uh, and uh, ask any questions if you have. Um, thanks for listening. Thank you.